All right, ladies and gentlemen, Darth Chain here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your days and nights or whatever. As you can see, I kind of have changed my armor. We are in full swing of a new living story called the Sky Pirates, uh, dealing with the Aether Blade attack during the Dragon Bash. And as you guys can possibly also see, I have gotten rid of my old Whispers armor. So I'll get, show you guys the armor, I'll show you guys some of the newer stuff, and then we're going to go hunting for the Mariner plaques, which have been left for... Um, Commodore Kobe Mariner. Uh, if you guys don't know who Kobe Mariner, Kobe Mariner is, he is um, the man who recreated Lion's Arch after the rise of Zaitan and the Great Wave <clears throat> through a ragtag group of humans, Char, Norn, and Asura. So um, it's more it's more explained in a well, it's much more explained within um. What's, uh, within the book Sea of Sorrows, so I strongly suggest reading that book. It is flipping amazing. So we're gonna go and find. We're gonna go. We're gonna show you guys a couple of things before we actually get into the video. Uh, I do have one thing to say. The the giveaway for Zaitan's Reach. Uh, I'm gonna have to get you. But uh. The, the, uh, I'm trying to remember right now, <laughs> the, uh, what's that called? Competition thingy for, um, Zaitan's Reach, as far as I know, is still going on. Uh, you guys have to watch my last video, Darth Chain for the Glory of Satan, of course, is, uh, the video you'll find the information on how to participate. It's inside the, uh, it's near the end of the video. So definitely check that out. I'm not turning to Satanism as some people would think. I'm um, it's actually a joke. You guys will understand it more when you actually re hear the uh, rules for the event or the uh, contest. So um, we'll show you guys my new armor. I got the Aether Blade light armor. Let me uh, throw the helm and the shoulders on. We'll show you guys what it completely looks like. So I like the look, it looks kind of cool. Uh, it does take away from my ver larger skirt as I'm more used to and gives me a shorter one. I did dye everything to a abyss, bronze, and brass dye scheme, so to make it look more steampunkish, because that's what Anet was going for. Now instead of using the uh, Aether Blade Helm, I'm actually using the monocle nowadays. And I believe that has about the same dye it has a bronze as its chain, or it has bronze as its main bot, main body, gold as the as the uh, chain, and a gray for the eyepiece. So um, next, we're going to go uh, check out the cutscene for the Dragon Bash. I've been meaning to put up for you guys. I completely forgot to put it up at the end of the video, like I wanted to. You actually got to experience this cutscene inside of the event in a. Uh, or during the Dragon Bash, and they kind of made a memor memorial book for it called Majora's Journal. Majora is a woman you've had to find inside of Divinity's Reach to help track down the murder of the Char and cultural ambassador that was killed during the Dragon Bash. So I'll double click this, you guys can watch it, I'll throw it back in the bank, and we will continue on to find Captain Mar uh, the Mariner's plaques. Here we go. technical difficulties. No, I don't want to destroy it. Huh. Apparently it's locking me out from being able to use it. That is odd. Alright, guess we ain't doing that then. So let's head over and we'll find the first Mariner plaque. It is going to be over here in this area. I do have a map of where all of them are. So we're going to be we're going to be needing speed boosts today. People, speed boosts, speed boost, speed boost. I do have a map showing every single one, so it should be quick to find them all. So the first one is going to be down here on this beach. Uh I got speed skills on. Got to jump. So uh to pass the time while talking, we do have some skill updates for the uh, Necromancer. We got a new condition called Torment, and it is currently on Path 5 in Tainted Shackles in the Death Shroud form. 
So it does uh, it uh, binds enemies to you, or binds en or yeah, binds enemies. If they break the bind, then they get heavily damaged, uh, and it deals damage over time. And if people are moving, it deals more damage. It is a very very evil skill. So uh, looks like we have our first Mariner plaque is going to be up here. So we'll read this inscription. We make it a free port, not beholden to any nation. The port would be open to any and all, so long as they'll fight against ore and help keep our waters clear. Cobia Cobia Mariner, founder of Lion's Arch, 1231 AE. AE is after Exodus, kind of like AD, after death, or whatever. So see, welcome, I'm Casual Hospital, local historian, and are you interested in Cobia Mariner's statue, the new book about Mariner's life, or have you come to take part in a history hunt? Take part in the history hunt. I can tell you Cobia's history, but walking in his footste footsteps is more illuminating. I've placed 12 plaques around Tyria, each detailing an important moment in his life. How do I get started? I'll give you the first plaque right now. It is Mariner's, Mariner's statue. The remaining plaques are located around Tyria. I wish you good travels and happy hunting. I titled Sea of Sorrows, and it's available in all the finest book carts in Tyria and on Earth. It is an inspirational tale of his origin as a child, with nothing and how he rose to become a man who built Lion's Arch. Tell me about the statue. Lion's Arch newest, Lion's, Arch's new, <laughs> Lion's Arch's newest landmark is a fine statue of the city founder, Cobia Mariner. He overlooks the, ci the city brought, he overlooks the city he brought back to life after war rose and flooded the old city. Thanks. Interesting. So, we're going to run over to the next one. Well, more like we're going to swim to the next one. Looks like it's underwater. And as we swim, we actually get to see all the old Lion's Arch. Mostly from uh, the Guild Wars 1 game. We're going to be uh, swimming over here into Sanctum Harbor. I should probably put that speed skill on, shouldn't I? Get a little bit of faster movement out of me. So we're not going to this one. We're going to th this rock right here. Yep, we're going to this rock right over here. All right, there's the rock. There's the next Mariner plaque. All right. Mariner plaque, let's get close enough to actually read it. In memory of Bivane, 1215 to 1219 AE. Beloved sister, may she always dance with mermaids. Um, I want to say spoiler alert. I really don't want to as well. Bivane was his little sister and she was her death kind of sent Cobia to become live life on the seas, essentially. If you guys actually uh, pop into the trading post within the next couple days, you can actually get um, Pola, which is Bivane's doll in the game. So we'll jump down here. Available, available for three days, Pola. Let's see if we can get the description to pop up. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Where the hell do I go for this? It seems I can't get the uh, thing to pop up. But it uh, references Bivane again, who is uh, Cobia's sister. So now we're going to jump over to the Fort Mariner waypoint, which is a lot of people think that uh, Fort Mariner is named after Cobia Mariner. Not too bad of an uh, wild goose chase, so we'll just leave it that way. So we got uh, the third Mariner plaque right here. Commander Kobe Manor often met his trusted mate Psychox on this bridge and talked about away from prying eyes. So this bridge actually uh, is is, is a main staple in the books. As they say, it can hold, withhold two yaks on it, so it's kind of cool. So yeah, you get to see uh, just kind of where Kobe got to stand. Alright, so next we're going to move to the next one, which is going to be up over here at the Lost Grotto. Uh, about the Lost Grotto? Looks like it. So we'll just run from where we're at. I'm trying to fall off the edge, because then we'll have to run even farther. And I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be too entertaining to you guys. But I do have to say, if you guys, like I said, if you guys have not picked up the book Sea of Sorrows, I strongly suggest it. We are currently at, we're currently headed to 4 of 12 of the Mariner Plaques. 
I do plan on showing you guys each and every single one and reading off every single one as well. The, the, I honestly just finished the book and if you guys don't have it and you like Guild Wars 2 and you love the lore for Guild Wars and you like the lore for Guild, Guild Wars 2 what's wrong with you? Why don't you have it yet? So I'm pretty sure these are also going in chronological... well they're not going in chronological order they're going in different orders I'm just going off what the map what a map shows me so we're gonna run up here and see if it's actually in this area right here I may be in the wrong place but we'll double check hmm nope here's a mariner plaque right here let's read it built in 2031 AE the crow's nest tavern is one of the oldest structures in the city it served as a meeting place for the first ship's council so what happens with the uh, the ship's council is instead of having one person have all the say inside of the new Lion's Arch, Kobe Mariner and a bunch of other captains decided to make a group. The groups would convene during certain times while most of the counselors were in dock and they would explain the future of Lion's Arch, what plans should be made, how they should spend some money they've come across through the markets and stuff like that to help better the city. and. Uh, Kobe Mariner, Mariner is always, always, always wanting to help with build Claw Island to help against Orion foes. Or I'm sorry, I should say Claw Island. Craw Island. I don't know what I, I don't know how freaking Traherne says it. He says it funny though. Claw Island. Sounds like I'm giving him like a speech impediment or downs or something like that. We gotta go protect Claw Island. Okay, where is the next Mariner plaque? It says it should be right on top of this point of interest. Let's see, there's a dragon pinata. There it is. So here's the next one. The site of Yom's Merchantile, established in 1235 AE, Yom was the first merchant to set up shop in Lion's Arch. He transformed the city into the largest trading port in Tyria and served on the captain's on the ship's council. That is correct. Yom actually also serves a much greater uh, presence as the book goes on. Spoiler alert right there. I'm very sorry if you guys have not finished it, but yes, he does turn out to be a very, very helpful little Asura. So we just hit fi uh, point 0.5. We'll head over to point 0.6. That is marked on this map, so we're going to jump down here and we'll head to the lighthouse. I'm pretty sure I've already seen this one myself, but I'm doing this one for you guys. So we're going to be jumping around a lot. Good thing we're in Lion's Arch, so I'm not wasting money. <laughs> uh, but the, we do have one port that is going to be taking a while to... That will take me a little bit while to get... A little bit longer to get to, sorry. And uh, will cost me a little bit of silver to get down to, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I already went and checked it out, and honestly, it looked awesome. It really did being able to see it. So the next one is going to be actually at this... Uh, lighthouse here. If you guys remember this lighthouse uh, was des destroyed um, when the Karka came from South Sun Cove. It was the first one destroyed. You, got, you were actually able to run inside, run up it, and look around a little bit, but it got destroyed and a Mariner plaque was put up in its place. So we're going to read it. Built in 1240 AE and rebuilt in 1250 AE, the Lion Gate Lighthouse guides all allies through the fog to safe harbor and provides a lookout for where sentries watch for dead ships. Another uh, little interesting little tid uh, interesting little tidbit is where this is is right at the opening for uh, the Sanctum Harbor, and just over here is Claw Island, which was made to take out dead ships, so the ships that the or Orions used to move around on before they could reach inland and there was supposed to be a, like a first warning for the city like they still are in here in Guild Wars 2 in the present day. So that's point six, so we're gonna head over to point seven now. This one's actually pretty close to a waypoint so we don't have to go too far. We're gonna be porting over here to... what is this one called? Macha's Landing. If you guys uh, have read the books yet, Macha is another Asura that helps thoroughly throughout the books. So here's another Mariner plaque, so we'll read it. 
Mancha's landing, Counselor Mancha, who is among the crew of Cobia Mariner's ship, sacrificed herself to defeat the Maw, an undead leviathan that attacked Lion's Arch in 1256 AE. So I'm kind of glad they put this plaque up for her, and they also named the entire ports after her. Uh, if you guys read the books, you'll understand her importance in the story, and honestly, it would have been amazing to meet these characters inside the game. You can meet Dougal Keen, you can meet all the members of Ed Ed Destiny's Edge, but these would be people that have been awesome to meet. So we got another uh, Mariner plaque right here, so we'll read it. Here lies the wreckage of the Pride, once captained by Cobia Mariner, and the remains of the Maw, an undead leviathan. Macha sacrificed herself to bring down the Maw, saving Lion's Arch from destruction. So I'm guessing if we jump in the water, we'll probably see, uh... Let's see if we can actually see part of the Pride. Or with the Pride's in the rock face. I'm not too sure the Pride is anywhere around here. It's probably just a plaque to show it. It probably isn't. I mean, the ship was... Well, spoiler alert again, literally blown to nothing but timber. So, that explains why that one's not here. So we got a, another Mariner plaque just over here. So we're going to check it out. I'm probably running right by it, or is it in the water? Because it literally is, like, right here. Where is the Mariner plaque? I saw I'm going to find all these for you guys. I'm enjoy I do enjoy doing videos like this. Oh, there it is. It's under the pier. Oh, can't go that way. Somewhere out here. There it is. So here's the next Mariner plaque. That's, that one's a little tricky to find. Commemorates the loss of the Lion's Arch fleet in 1256 AE when saboteurs loyal to Crichton Prince Dare set the ships afire during the Great Crichton Blockade. Captain Mori... Mor Cobia Mariner defeated the saboteurs upon his stretch upon this stretch of beach. Again, I would explain this one, but you'd have to read the book. Just know that there was four people, and he was battling with uh, one of his friend, one of his allies inside Lion's Arch at the time. So that's Port Nine. So we got a uh, Plaque Nine. So now we're going to hit Port Ten. We're going to head back over here to Macha's Landing, and we'll hit uh, the tenth one. And then we'll hit the last, but certainly, or the last, but certainly not least one here in Lion's Arch. Then we'll go show you guys the twelfth one. So we have another one over here by whatever the heck this thing is. So there's the last Mariner plaque, or another one. The Morin Memorial honors those who died defending Lion's Arch. Lion's Arch. Osh Morin, captain of the Sama's Grace, fought with Cobia Mariner against the dead ship Harbinger. He went to become one of the original members of the ship's council. Sadly, his time on the uh, council was long, but ended in a very saddening way. Again, I'm trying really hard not to spoil this spoil this stuff for you guys, because I'm reading this, and my mind's just jutting back to exactly, exactly in the story, where exactly in the story all this stuff happens. So we're going to hit the last uh, plank, which is over here. And now I'm understanding this. I already know the significance of this house that's over here. It always it always bothered me. It always made me wonder, what was the significance of this house? But now I know exactly what it is. Or I'm, I'm having a guess at what it is. I wonder if you can actually meet someone in here. So we'll just run inside the house and take a look. Villager, citizen, it's right up here. Let's see. Adventure, adventure, nothing, nothing. Okay, maybe I'm wrong about this house. We'll see. We'll see, I want to see. Villager, villager, villager. Yep, I'm maybe wrong about this house. So let's uh, run down here and we'll hit the final plaque here in Lion's Arch. <laughs> Mariner plaque. Here lies Commodore Covey Mariner, 1203 to 1286. Damn, he was 83 years old when he died. And Captain Issei, 1198 to 1287. Oh, she just lived just a little bit longer than her. Husband and wife, founders of Lion's Arch, loving parents to Dane. Dane Mariner is their son. And I may have just ruin that little, ruin it a bit for uh, him.
This is actually Kobia's house. He had it built to look, overlook Lion's Arch in the most beautiful way he, he could think of. And you know what? Mr. Kobia, or Mr. Mariner, you had good taste. That is a very lovely view of Lion's Arch. So now we're going to hit the uh, very last portion of the Mariner plaque because I know exactly where it is, so I don't have to second guess it. It's going to be down here in the Strait of Malkor. So we're going to port over here to Light's Waypoint. This one's a little bit harder, uh, longer to get to. So wait for Malkor's Leap to uh, jump in here. Reading the battle against this ship in Sea of Sorrows and what happened from there is absolutely beautiful. If you guys remember Captain Morin, who was talked about, uh, who fought us alongside uh, Kobe, Kobia. I'm just going to call him Kobe, because that's what all his friends call him. It is a uh, very interesting... It's very cool how it happens. It really is. I thoroughly enjoyed how it, how it read. The only problem is, is they kind of moved it from where it was supposed to be, because this fight and this, way, and this point of interest should be more in the Ring of Fire. Uh, excuse me. Then all the way out here in Malkor's Leap. But hey, we deal the cards we don't, huh? So, here's the sea, as you can see. Yes, we're going to make that pun. Sorry, I will shut up now. Uh, swimming, swimming. A couple of you guys probably already know what I'm going to go see, so... Don't ruin it for, any, don't ruin it for everybody else. Alright, we're close enough. We're going to dive down under the water. So this is on the uh, point of interest, Harbinger. I'll even show it to you guys. Harbinger. If you guys uh, remember it, Kobe Mariner, or Kobe Mariner, and Captain Morin fought against this ship. This is actually the uh, first dead ship. Oh crap! Gotta take this guy down. That had ever been taken down. No one else knew how to take down a dead ship, as they would be referred to afterwards. Until Morin and Kobe, Kobe, took this one down. This captain's going to take me a little bit to take down. Give me a second. Try not to grab any of his mate's attentions. It's a vet, and I don't have anything to stealth me, so i got to fight him. Oh, well, what's, a, what's a video without a little bit of action? And we can also talk about uh, one of the minion skills they introduced, um, or some of the traits they introduced. Minions not... Uh, Necromancers now have a trait that they can equip that causes burning. Don't ask me which one it is. I have absolutely no clue because I don't use that trait, obviously. But uh, Death Nova did get a buff. So whenever a minion dies, it literally explodes, causing a bit of a damage in AoE. And also... Uh, and also creating the three second cloud of poison. So here's the final Mariner plaque. Oh, I got the history buff achievement, and I got something cool. The Wreck of the Dead Ship Harbinger, the first dead ship ever defeated, sunk in 1231 AE by the Salma's Grace, a Cretan ship and the Pride, captained by Cobia Mariner. So let's see what actually I got for doing this. History buff. Sea of Sorrows. Double click to gain five skill points. Thank you, Anet. Like I need more. I've got 500. I have not gone for a legendary yet. That's the only reason why I have so many. <laughs> it's because I have not gone for a legend for a legendary weapon and I farm like no tomorrow on this character. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little view into the Sea of Sorrows. That is the story of Captain Kobia Mariner. If you guys haven't picked up the book, I still strongly, strongly suggest you go and pick it up. It is a very, very good read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I strongly suggest you guys to go get it. Uh, I picked mine up. I picked mine up at a Barnes and Noble. So, yeah, go get it. If you haven't gotten it yet, go get it. I, I mean it. Go get the book. If I have to link it down in Amazon, I will. Like an Amazon link into the uh, YouTube description and put a freaking annotation up here to get you guys to go buy the book. By George, I will. But uh, other than that, let's see what's up here. I think this just leads uh, back outside into the Sea of Sorrows. Or into Malkor's Leap. Yep. 
set it back in there. This ship is big, man. But hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will definitely see you all next time. This has been Darth Chain, and I'll see you all next video I get to produce. Let's see if we can actually swim under it real quick. Get close up to the edge. Oh yeah, that is a very big ship. The only way they cool, could have made it any bit cooler is if they put a... Uh, is if they put the Indomitable into the game. But that may have been asking a little too much. Take care.